and welcome back to the latest Energize show. Barry, how are you doing? Ross, I'm doing brilliant. Me, even though you didn't ask, I'm doing fantastic too. If you are new to the Energize podcast, welcome. And if you're a returning Energize watcher slash listener, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. And if you see that little red button down there, hit a subscribe. Yeah. I've actually noticed half the people haven't subscribed. So half they, them? Yeah. So I don't know if they're just like nosy or they just want to. Yeah. They're probably just nosy. So ask them what's new. Ross, what is new? So me and Barry went out to Bray on Sunday. Do we did? And got a new phone. Well, a new phone cover. Have a look at that. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I don't know if you can see that. Or we'll tilt it whatever way you can. But that is the Energize logo in gold on the back of my phone. How cool is that part? Um, to be honest, I actually think it is pretty cool, to be honest. I think I have another part. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> here it is. Oh, it's here. <laughs> Just in case I forget, it says Ross. That probably is backwards now on the screen, that isn't is, it? That is definitely backwards, yeah. Definitely backwards. Very me. Yeah. So that was actually Kevin from I Gold Elegance. He sorted us out with that. Um, Barry, you gave the wrong phone size so and didn't work. Yeah, I have to go back in a few weeks' time because uh, I had an iPhone 6 and then I got an iPhone 6S and the cover for it is an iPhone 6 and 14. But yeah. In fairness, I could have easily made the same mistake because I don't think there's any difference. If someone handed me an iPhone 6 and an iPhone 6S without going into that like setting to be like, what is my iPhone? I wouldn't know the difference. So that's that. Yeah. Thanks, Kev. Yeah, thanks a million, Kev. But uh, on today's show, we're going to be discussing Tyson Fury winning over the weekend in Las Vegas. Uh, we're also going to be looking at Hartham taking on Polly Malignaggi in bare knuckle boxing. Um, it's funny how we're going to be discussing that because um, it's just such a strange sport. Yeah, it's just sheer violence. <laughs> yeah, sheer violence. Uh, also, we're going to be discussing Bellator in New York that was on over the weekend. And this weekend, Bellator London's on. And... Uh, we're going to be discussing UC that's on this weekend as well. So plenty of combat sports. If you're here watching, make sure to subscribe because we always talk about combat sports. Um, before we get into the show, Ross, what do you think is going to be the most watched thing this weekend? Are them taking on Polly Malin at Bare Knuckle Boxing, uh, Bellator London, or UC Greenville? I'm going to say, in order, Artem versus Polly, followed by Bellator London, then UFC. I that's, think, that's my guess yeah it? the most interest is definitely going to be the bare knuckle boxing but uh, before we get into that we're going to be starting off Tyson Fury won again over the weekend still undefeated Ross what did you make of it so Barry before we get any further into this I have one question and one question only to ask you what was longer Tyson Fury's walkout the fight itself or Tyson Fury's singing after the fight um it's maybe not an easy question is it the, the I'm not actually exactly sure what the what it is, but uh, it was a show nonetheless. It was, it was. Tyson Fury came out wearing his Apollo Creed gear, and um, dismantled Tom Schwartz in two rounds. Yeah. If you want to see boxing, heavyweight boxing at its finest, Tyson Fury is the man to watch. Also, just type in hashtag Tyson Fury into Instagram, and when you type that in, you'll see some of the slickest boxing heavyweights you'll ever see, won't you? Yeah. Like, do you dodged all the punches incredible and then him doing his vintage sing song afterwards the most entertaining heavyweight from start to finish isn't he yeah, yeah man um, he's really changed over the last year I know he, the thing is right all this mental health talk there's like the, I feel like every interview they get that I don't know I, I don't know why they keep focusing on that I know it's a big thing to talk about but like he's also the lineal heavyweight champion in the world yeah. you know what I mean I do, although I do think them keep on mentioning that to him Makes him keep on top of his mental health. Um, the fact that he also beat Tom Schwartz, I think, is is good for him as well because he knew he was much better than him. Yeah. When he, uh, uh, if he got the nod against Deontay Wilder, I think he'll be more worried for his mental mental health because he'll feel almost like he's reached the top of the mountain. I think that's when Tyson Fury falls off the rails when he feels like yeah. he's accomplished everything. I think when he beat Klitschko, he was like, right, boxing completed it. Yeah, so he's almost lucky he still has the opportunity to take on Deontay Wilder, uh, Andy Joshua, and even possibly Andy Ruiz as well. Yeah, he was making so many good, like, fat person people jokes that, like, oh, yeah. it's a good year for the fat man. It's, yeah, exactly. It's a bit, he's in a strange situation now because Andy Joshua's obviously lost, and, like, he's from the, the UK as well. And now people are more like Tyson Fury. They get, the people, like, the average person, right, who looks in the mirror, they probably look more like Deontay uh, Tyson Fury than they would Anthony Joshua you know oh one million percent 
So no like, one looks like Anthony Joshua. Yeah, I know. So like, Anthony like, Joshua looks like he should be on Love Island. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas Tyson Fury looks like he should be in the queue for... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he looks like he was the second row who played rugby about five years ago. He does. He, he, also, how much older does he look than 29? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to think like Tyson Fury, Fury looks a lot older than me. If you think Tyson Fury looks older than me, give this video the thumbs up. And if you think Tyson Fury looks younger than me, give the thumbs down. <laughs> There's already like a hundred thumbs down already. But uh, what did you Rage. make? What you make it of anyway? Like he, he went in, won, put on a put on a brilliant show. I was sort of like, will he make a mess of this the exact same way Anthony Joshua did? But uh, straight in, no messing in his debut in uh, Las Vegas. Like I said, he's the best heavyweight boxer in the world, and I mean like actually technically boxing. He is, isn't he? His, his slips are incredible. Yeah, and he punches as if like you miss now. I have to punish you for it. Yeah, the media were sort of letting on that Anti Joshua was the best, but. Uh, I think Fury would have a field day with Anthony Joshua. Like, oh, no so joke. Do I. No joke. I think he'd really embarrass him. Yeah. I don't think Joshua could have done what Fury did as well because, like, Fury is just a natural born fighter. Whereas Joshua, he couldn't go on the drink and the drugs and then put on all that weight and come back. Uh, you no, know I don't think so. Yeah. I think Fury's the only person that's going to be able to do it. Fury's, like, one of the most mentally tough people you'll ever meet. Yeah. Do you think, where would you rank him in the, the best ever? For box like in boxing because he's currently ba- ranked number one in the world. He's probably top five. Like I would have had in terms of heavyweights, I would have had like Vladimir Klitschko in that top five. He's beaten him. Um, you have Mike Tyson up there, Lennox Lewis, Muhammad Ali, and probably um, what's his name, Joe Frazier. I think they're sort of the best people, and I'd have Tyson Fury right up there with him. I think yeah. by the time he's done, if he could beat Wilder, beat Joshua. And of course, Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz, yeah. Then, like, Fury's up there, one of the best of all time. Yeah. He, I, he's probably close to Muhammad Ali in, like, in terms of heavyweights who move the way he moves. Yeah. It's, yeah. I oh, know. It's crazy. He's six foot nine. He, he's just literally. Oh, he's oh, yeah, absolutely. Fact, he's the closest thing to uh, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee that we've seen in a very long time. Exactly, exactly. But uh, he's going to be fighting again. Uh, before the end of the year and he says early next year he's going to take on Deontay Wilder uh, Deontay Wilder's next fight is against Ortiz who Deontay Wilder previously beat so uh, there's good things coming and uh, it's actually brilliant to see Tyson Fury he's just a uh, he's just the man at the moment isn't he he is yeah, yeah. he's must see TV as well king of the heavyweights uh, we're going to move into bare knuckle boxing right um, last time poly, uh, sorry excuse me last time Artem Lobov took on uh, Knight and uh before leaning into it, I think we mentioned on one of the shows, but we really didn't go that much into detail about it because we didn't know what to expect, really. You no, know? what are we on? Bare Knuckle Boxing 5, I think it yeah. is, is it? Uh, so it's only the fifth ever show they've done. Is it four or five? Ah, I don't think it's overly important. It's in and around that anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm so on the website here. It doesn't even say it. But so yeah. we, haven't do- we haven't seen many of them. Yeah. Uh, look, Artem is as hard as nails. I, I, I can't ever remember seeing him get stopped. I, now, we might have a KO loss eventually somewhere on his record. He's fought a lot, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, Polly Malinaji, he's famous now for being knocked down by Conor McGregor in sparring. Yeah, he is. Which yeah. I feel bad for him, as in, like, he had a fairly successful boxing career, and that's what he's famous for. Yeah. But the, the only legends are remembered for winning big fights, though, you know, as well. Yeah. So for people who didn't know Polly Malinaji, unless they saw him doing his commentating, which, by the way, he is very good at. Yeah, he is very, very good. Yeah. People say he's, like, twice as good at commentating as he was at boxing. He's very, very good, though. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, especially for someone. Who, when you actually see him doing the interview, he gets a bit punch drunk or something. There's something about when he gets roiled up, he's not very entertaining. But when he's given his analysis, it's very entertaining. Yeah, it it's it just comes straight out of his mouth. There's no even thought about. It. He's just yeah. like he knows. He just knows. It's almost know? like he's like the Dominic Cruz of boxing. I think. Yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and but obviously in the lead up to this, Paulie's obviously spat at Artem. Yeah. Uh, he's tried to hit him with the mic and stuff. Uh, do you think? that leading into the fight do you think that's like all on purpose or do you think it's for show or do you think there's actual a lot of hatred going on I think there's a bit of both to be honest um, after watching it I think he more so spat chewing him at him as opposed to like he didn't do a gullier on him he didn't go you know what I mean but still obviously very very disrespectful um, in my opinion you should never like spit at someone whether it's food or actual phlegm yeah. uh, look Artem I feel like He's willing to have a back and forth with anyone as well. Uh, uh, by the way, I think this is number six. Going to tell him he's going to kick their ass. And Polyman Naji, he's a New Yorker, so he's going to talk about the game. 
when it comes down to it, I fancy Paul Malinaji to win. Um, I think he's probably the slicker boxer of the two. And look, probably slightly bigger reach. Slightly bigger reach. But you never know, Polly Malinaji might like break his hand in the first round and not want to tough it out, as opposed to like I feel like if Arden broke his hand in the first round, he just keep on punching. Yeah. Arden's are also like don't forget, Arden has also already done it. And True. gone the whole five rounds. No, three rounds. It's not five oh, it's five two minute rounds, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, which was absolutely unreal. Like that's why I have to watch this, because the last time him against Arthur against Knight was just unbelievable. Teeth were going everywhere, you know? Although then again, Artem was sparring Connor as well, so like Artem's a tough cookie and he's boxed at a very high level. Yeah, I oh know, I 100 percent agree with that. It's just Artem's actually literally been in that little yeah. ring. Like when Polly goes in, he's gonna be like, This is all brand new. And he knows that Artem doesn't give up. You, you know? know what it's like? It's, it is very much so like really high end hill if Hillbilly's got loads of money. This is what the sport they'd have, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be weird to see what happens with this going into the future as well, like in the next few years and who else will take on. I think I'm more interested to see a few heavyweights at it, but it could be a bit of Kimbo Slice, data 5,000 sort of going on. Yeah. Or, or yeah. 5,000 or 500? Data 5,000. All right, grand. Yeah, that's it, yeah. But uh, for some reason, I'm going to just back Arden because uh, I think we both, before we... Bar- no, I just, I hate the way we both go, right, we think this person could win, yeah. they were both wrong, you know? <laughs> True. So cover the ass. I'm gonna go with Arthur with this. Uh, I can't wait to see it. It's gonna be really, really interesting to see what happens next. What happens if Polly wins? Does he then take on Jason Knight and they have a little three way uh round robin sort of thing? It's gonna be really, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, let us know who you think is gonna be there. Oh, by the way, who do you think is gonna walk out with Arthur? Doss Brack. Doss Brack, yeah. If you haven't checked out Doss Brack's art, it's unreal. Yeah, definitely do. Uh that's going on, on Saturday, so uh Definitely tune into that. Um, right, we're going to move into the world of Bellator. It, it was on over the weekend in New York. Uh, we're going to start off with Chael Sonnen losing to Leona Machida and announcing his retirement. Ross, the bad guy is officially the retired guy. Yeah, um, Chael Sonnen, what a career. Love yeah. watching Chael, whether it's on the mic or in the ring. He's an absolute animal of man. Yeah. And as you said, he has no toughness left to give. He has no reason to get into the octagon. I think that's yeah. the real, the real thing. He has no, nothing to actually drive right. him to get there. How disappointing and is it that like it's it's age that's retired him? You know. Well, uh, I was saying, like it's, that's probably better than like death or like getting knocked you out. You can sort of see when he weighed in and stuff. The it wasn't the body of someone who was tirelessly training. Yeah. You know what I mean, but but I mean like the way he's like definitely one of the top three, if not top five, best like characters. Oh, that have hundred you know percent. When when he won his fight and went, Anderson Silva, you suck. I was like, as cringy as it was, it was brilliant. You know what I mean? Yeah. And his call outs are famous in the world, mixed martial arts forever. I know, man. Really, really like, but like, we put a post out, obviously, but uh, we were just saying, like, at least you can catch his podcast. He does yeah. the show with Ariel, and uh, there's just, he's not he's not leaving the sport forever, but. Uh, Chael Sonnen. You're welcome. Yeah, but uh, that was a great win for Mishida. Yeah. Uh, do you expect him to get the title shot next against Ryan Bader? Uh, I actually think he's going to drop down and fight Musasi next and then go up and fight Bader. Yeah. Uh, oh, Mishida's, yeah. Mishida's also previously beaten Ryan Bader, who's currently the champ champ. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, we'll just... Or, sorry, Mishida's beaten Bader. Yeah, that's what I said, yeah. Oh, it's like Musasi. No. No, Mishida. Oh, Mishida, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'll go into the, we'll go into the main, main event. Uh, Rory McDonald defeated Neiman Gracie in the semi-final of the welterweight Grand Prix. Winner, by the way, gets a million dollars from 50 Cent. He was actually in the uh, arena. Um, Ross, Rory McDonald, um, what you have to say about this man? He got the job done. Decision um, machine. Decision machine, yeah. The new George St. Pierre uh, for Trade of Canada. Look, this was the complete article. Rory McDonald fighting uh, Neiman Gracie, who's a jiu-jitsu ace. I always thought Roy McDonald, he was going to be able to keep it on the feet and get the job done. Yeah. So, fair play to Roy McDonald. Yeah. Yeah. Neiman, Neiman Gracie was also undefeated going into that. Uh, one of the most talked about people in Bellator is Dylan Dennis. He remained undefeated and he won by submission against Max Humphrey. Lovely shorts. They were lovely shorts. Uh, Ricky Bande has lost. Um, Juan Archuleta won. That was very impressive. He should get the title shot next. Araguchi then won the Bantamweight title. Why did that open up the fight, fight night? That was very strange, wasn't it? It was actually, yeah. Um, who he's else? brilliant, Haraguchi. Phil yep. Hawes won. He's pretty impressive. And Robson, Robson Gracie and Mike Kimball, my yeah. mate. Yeah, and Hedda Hardy also lost as well. She's crap, isn't she? <laughs> also, She's yeah, quite Ar- old. Like. Aaron Pico lost. I think all three of his losses have come in Madison Square Garden. You know that? 
Oh, no, two of them were now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we'll move into this weekend. Uh, this weekend, Bellator London goes down. We were actually there last year. You'll probably see the p- photograph coming up this week. Ross holding Gegard Mousasi's belt, who's actually defending it this weekend. Get the strap. Um, we'll probably start with that, Ross. Gegard Mousasi taking on Rafael Lovato Jr. in the middleweight division for the title. Lovato Jr. is obviously 9-0. and Mousasi's uh, record almost looks like a phone number. 45-6-2. and two. Ross, what are you expecting here? Uh, look, I like Gegar Musasi in this one. Uh, Lovato Jr. is absolutely brilliant. He's probably the best submission specialist uh, Bellator have up there with Dylan Danis. Probably even better. He finishes, I think, seven of his eight or nine wins by submission. Very, very impressive. But Gegard, I think, will keep this one on the feet and he'll get the job done. Yeah, I'll go with Gegard as well. Uh, Paul Daly's actually on the card as well, coming off a loss against MVP. He's taking on Eric Silva. Um Paul Daly's for the win, yeah, let's say. I think uh, so, yeah. Ireland's own James Gallagher has taken on uh, Jeremiah Labiano. Uh, James Gallagher won his last fight headline in Dublin. What are you expecting here, Ross? I'm oh, expecting another James Gallagher choke. J- James Gallagher, boy, rear naked choke. Yeah. Also, he's putting out vlogs in the build up to his fight. If you want to check them out, they're on YouTube. I think TNT Photography or something was doing his P- vlogs. PMP, yeah. I think it PMP, is. PMP, yeah, yeah, he does a good job. Yeah. Uh, Melvin Manhoof is actually on the card as well in the light heavyweight division. And um, Michael Shipman. Yeah. The, oh, was he fighting ahead of Fabian? Uh, that's probably not 100% guaranteed. Uh, Fabian Edwards, who's previously been on the show, he's taking on Jonathan Basuku. Uh, is that a new opponent like from like two weeks ago, no? I feel like is. it is. Yeah. Charlie Ward's also on the card as well. And uh, Aaron Chalmers is on the card. And uh, who else from SPG? Um, Johnny Jitsu. Yeah. Just um, loads of people on the card. Chris yeah. Bungard, he, he's actually all right. Yeah. It's actually going to be it's John Redman, Johnny Jitsu, he's on the card as well. Let's see if anything else pops up. Uh, Terry Brazier. And call something out there. Alfie Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Alfie Davis. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a decent card as well. London, get ready. Uh, also this weekend, UFC returns to Greenville. Um, it's going to be headlined by Massiano. is taking on the Korean Zombie. Saturday, man, the amount of fight action is going to be on Saturday. Yeah, You'll be like asleep going like this. I'll be in the rotunda ha- give yeah. Jay giving birth and be like, shh, the fights are on. Yeah, Ross is actually having the kid this is it will it be this week? Maybe this week, maybe next week. Sometime very, very soon. Very, very soon. Come to a podcast near you. Come to a podcast near you. Uh what, what do you make of this we'll, man? We'll, Massiano. We'll just, we'll just go for the top two fights. Uh you have John Lineker fighting in the Bantamweight division against Rob Font. That's a striker's delight. That will be done on the fee. I like Lineker in that one just because if they're gonna bang it out, it's easy to bet on Lineker, isn't it? Yeah. And then in the main event, uh, Hanato Moicano versus Chan Sung Jung. I think Moicano's only two losses are to Jose Aldo and to Brian Ortega. The Korean Zombie does look pretty hot, but I'm going to go for Moicano. I think he does really good with the leg kicks, and I think he'll get the job done. Okay, I'll just really agree. I feel like this is like the third best card. Like I'm looking forward to the bare knuckle boxing. <laughs> then Bellator London, and then this as well. Yeah, it's a bit of a throwaway really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, are you looking for someone to be on the card who you know well like I can see people but like me mentioning that like Alan Crowder they previously beat uh, Hardy oh uh, Greg Hardy Greg Hardy by, by DQ Scott, by <laughs> yeah. Matt Wyman do you remember him from the Ultimate Fighter he was like the Ultimate Fighter 2 when he's fighting uh, fighting Bob Ross oh yeah uh, speaking about the Ultimate Fighter that reminds me Dana White's Contender Series starts Tuesday tomorrow yeah, yeah. this Tuesday so whatever Tuesday you're yeah. watching but if you're watching on Wednesday, it was Tuesday. And if you're watching today, it's today. Yeah, it's on every week for the next two weeks. I can't wait to see that as well because that's always very entertaining. But uh, I think we were going to keep this 20 minutes, right? Yeah, so I think that sort of wraps it up. Yeah. Guys, um, thanks a million. Yeah, if, you're, if you've are if you gotten this far, make sure to wish Ross all the best as well this week. Thanks, Baz. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, make sure to subscribe as well. Subscribe, thumbs up. And as always, stay energized. energized.